Good evening and welcome to uh, the December 7th, 2016 meeting of the St. Louis Park Telecommunications Commission. It is on. Can you hear me? Testing? Okay. Uh, first item is roll call. Maren Anderson. Present. Bruce Browning. Here. David Dyer. Cindy Hoffman. Here. Ralph Peterson. Here. Abe Levine. Here. All right, thank you for that. The second item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. And in your packet was great minutes that really detailed our uh, conversation about audits and things like that. But uh, I didn't see anything. Did anybody else have anything? Additions or corrections? All right, uh, I'll take a motion to approve. Motion to approve. In a second? So I'll second. Moved. We can second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. That motion carries. The second item is adoption of the agenda. Mr. So, Chair. Yes. I need to uh, add an item to the agenda. Uh, it would be item then 6F, complaint log review. That uh, typically is on the agenda, and I, I forgot it this time. Complaint log review. All right. Well, let me just run through these items real quick. Uh, first item was call to order, then roll call, approval of the minutes, uh, adoption of the agenda, then five is public comment, six, reports and discussion. So under that, we have now seven items. A is uh, council chambers remodeling. B is uh, consider franchise fee review for Comcast. Uh, C, the draft annual report for 2016. Uh, D, the draft work plan for 2017 and set meeting schedule for 2017. E, elect chair and vice chair effective next meeting and F, complaint log review. Following that, we'll have uh, communications from the chair, commissioners and city staff, and then adjournment. Our, I'll look for a motion on the the agenda. So moved. In a second. Second. Uh, any additions or subtractions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. All right. That carries also. So we're to number five, public comment. And I see no one, so the cold must have kept them away, huh? Reg, we talked about that yesterday, so... Uh, I see nobody here, so we'll move right on to reports and discussion. And the first item is A, Council Chambers remodeling, and we have a guest. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair Peterson. Uh, my name is Brian Hoffman, and I uh, serve the city as director of the inspections department, one of the divisions of inspections and facilities. And as part of facilities, we basically maintain uh, many of the, the city facilities as well as uh, plan remodels and, and things like that. So um, what I'm going to share with you tonight is the plan, uh, an initial plan of what we're going to be doing to this very room here, our city council chambers. Um, this room, even though it's called the council chambers by many, is really a, a community gathering place. And just as you're holding uh, your commission meeting here, uh, we have a lot of people that come in and use this room for various meetings. Uh, members of the uh, community as well as it's used by city staff for holding large trainings and meetings as well. Uh, on average it's used about 15 hours a week actually uh, for non-council meeting events. So it really is a place where that's uh, a main uh, gathering uh, location. So we wanted to take that into consideration. This building, built in the early 1960s, I'll give you a little bit of background because it's interesting, I think, uh, has gone through a lot of interior minor remodels. We put a lot of band-aids on things. Police moved out to the police station. Uh, there was some rearrangement that went on. We moved the entrance from third floor to first floor many years ago. Uh, but it was never really a complete remodel. It was just sort of a shuffling. Uh, when fire moved out into the fire stations, the fire admin, uh, that was really the opportunity to say, you know, what are we going to do with City Hall? We've gone through other city facilities, basically brought them into good condition, uh, made them usable for many, many years going in the future to meet the needs of the community. So we took a look, did an evaluation, said, 
this building, will it work? Well, this was built solid. This is all poured con reinforced concrete. This building is not going anywhere. Uh, it may not be the most architecturally stunning building, but it's a very solid building with a long life ahead of it. So the council made a decision several years ago is, well, let's make the investment and do a remodel. So it started with first floor. Uh, with the new entrance, uh, having a central receptionist, the community room was probably one of the most uh, been uh, commented on rooms, uh, liked by so many people. And the design down there really changed the building dramatically. We still get compliments on it quite a bit. The architectural firm is Crock O'Brien Mueller and Associates. So then uh, last year we finished up second and third floor offices and the lobbies. Carried the basic styling theme through. It wasn't nearly as major of a, of a project as the first floor. And it came up now to where, well, the last room left really in this building is the city council chambers as well as the restrooms on the second and third floor. So we started saying, well, at the very least we need to put in carpeting, we need to put in some new chairs and, and wall finishes. And so we went to council and said, well, this is planned and is there an opportunity to do something else? So we're working once again with the same architect who did the first floor and said, what could we do with this room? How could we improve it to make it a more inviting place and a better layout? Um, something else we took a look at too is, gee, should we think about security at all? You know, a city council room like this, what are the options, what should we do? So we had a couple of good discussions with the city council. And what you're seeing here are the, the concepts that council saw last month that we're going to start to build an actual plan off. Uh, they gave the go-ahead, they said, no, let's do more, let's do a full remodel to this room. So, what you see up here on the board is the new configuration. And even though it's new, it's actually the way the room originally was when it was built, where the front of the room was up here where I'm standing at the screen. And uh, at some point in history, it got converted, uh, 90 degrees flip, basically. And we had, uh, I think it was in the 80s, and then the last remodel refreshing of the room was about 15 years ago. So in this plan up here, uh, what I'm standing on right now is a concrete platform. This is not going anywhere. The one that the, uh, you're sitting on right now is actually wood, and so we can remove that. So this is going to start with basically a total removal of everything in this building, ceiling, all interior walls, flooring, furniture, everything will go. And we're going to reorientate the room to have the council dais up here like this. The big advantage is this back wall here now, because right now it's actually built out with the uh, panels behind where you're seated. Uh, we're going to remove this to the lobby and put in uh, a glass wall, just like we have down the first floor in the meeting rooms, uh, community room. So we'll put in a nice section of glass with two glass doors. And we'll basically make it so that it can be darkened either with a blind or a, a tinting feature. So if there's meetings in the room and they don't want the, the, the visual into the lobby, it can be darkened. But when there's a council meeting or something like that, and this room is full, that will allow people to be in the lobby, maybe waiting to come in or whatever, and see what's going on and feel like they're part of this. The other thing is it also gives, if you're sitting up here, a view of what's going on in the room. Right now, if someone walks in, you have no idea. So this just seemed to make a lot more sense from a design concept. Um, the, uh, as, as a safeguard, the council dais will be basically a ballistic uh, reinforced um, to provide uh, duck and cover in just in case. Um, the room, when we remove all this over here, will expand, probably be several hundred more square feet of seating area. Increase both for chairs as well as training right now. You know, we might have seven, eight round tables in here for a training with six chairs around it. This will allow us to put several more. So it really does allow us to have an increased capacity and usability in this room. Uh, I've got to add an extra exit door down on this level to make sure we're all fully accessible so we can have steps in the exit way for uh, disabled accessibility. And uh, the new presentation table for staff is expected to be over here, um, as well as a little... Uh, spot right up in front of the council, just as we have now. The ceiling, uh, that's going to be on the next drawing. Uh, the ceiling, though, will all come down, and what you're seeing here in this picture is the use of large TV monitors. Great clarity, great definition. 
Uh, we'll have to figure out where they need to be placed strategically throughout the room, but the idea is people won't have to turn their head 90 degrees to see a presentation. Hopefully we'll be able to make it easier. The other thing is on the back side of probably the two most front screens, we'll probably also have screens for the city council so that who's ever sitting at the table to see a presentation, they can just look straight ahead and see the presentation. Um, back here we've got the two rooms right now the plan is to leave this wall in place it doesn't really gain us a lot to change it probably put a door to combine these two rooms we'll possibly have a door here just so that anybody who's in the room here can get out without having to walk behind the council table we're going to use get all the all the oak is leaving this room the blonde oak the trim the doors the railings and what we're going to use is probably a combination of glass and aluminum carrying through the same theme that we have downstairs on the stairway on up here. Uh, the ceiling, this is all basically these concrete beams. Leave it pretty much exposed. This is trying to show sort of the concept. And then we'll use dropped acoustical panels up there, use recessed LED lighting, uh, put the speakers, the HVAC, and basically build it all in those drop panels. One thing council, of course, and the city's very uh, aware of is trying to be green. So anything going in here, we're going to be using LCD, uh, um, LED lighting and trying to always improve our energy efficiency wherever we can. We will have to have a whole new area set up above here, just as above the table now, for, for lighting, for televising, and getting good color. One of the many details to be worked out. And just to give you an idea of the glass wall going out into the lobby, how it'll change this room. And probably the most, uh, there's also gonna be wood in here, probably use some wood trim, cherry, but once again, the styling theme, the architect and designer will have some fun trying to create a nice look in here. The big thing though, and this was a question for council, is on this wall, right now we have 10 little narrow windows with blinds that are a lot of work to slowly roll up and so, they stay shut most of the time. And of course, they need to be shut if the sun's in the west coming into the room. However, there's a lot of times during the day when they could be wide open and we could make this room feel much more airy. The community room, you might remember, used to be a uh, concrete, painted concrete block wall with no windows. Well, the windows made it come alive. And so it's actually the most popular room, I think, in the city right now for, for holding a meeting. And so after some discussion, council said, well, let's do it. Let's cut out the walls. And we're gonna have two 17 foot wide windows in there, basically. So this whole wall will be glass. Um, these windows are old. We have something else to start taking a look at replacing in this building anyways. But uh, we thought, well, let's get the big thermal pane windows in there and we will have either a, uh, what's called sage glass, oh, that's a company's name, uh, that's, cell, that's darkening, electronically tinted glass, I guess is the technical name, electrochromatic glass, so that when you're in here, it could be clear or it could be dark or anywhere in between, and you can just tint the glass by throwing a switch. Other option, if that's too expensive or not going really dark enough, we could use a set of double roller blinds like we have in the community room. So all of this is coming together and will be designed this winter. Uh, city staff will do a lot of the work, our facilities department and, and uh, other people in our operations will get together and do the demo and some of the light construction as well as and then using uh, licensed electricians and uh, other contractors. Uh, we'll be adding a convenience sink and coffee maker in this back storeroom. The storerooms will be less stuff stored and a little bit more usable. Uh, right now if you wanted to bring uh, refreshments into the room, it comes from admin and then through the lobby, so we're going to do that in here. Uh, pretty big investments, about $870,000 is what the budget is right now based on our contracting estimates. Uh, and then on top of that, there's also $100,000 in the CIP for basically the technology in this room. Um, upgraded high definition cameras, the monitors, and whatever else is necessary. Um, Estimated construction, June, starting probably three solid months that this room will be out of commission. Uh, council will use the community room, uh, we'll set that up for televising in the meantime during construction. And then hopefully this will be all set up and operational by fall.
So welcome any questions or comments you may have. We're still trying to figure out how to design this too, so we're looking for input on the specifics. I was just curious with the amount of glass that's going to be in here, acoustically, any issues there or will the ceiling kind of compensate for that with the acoustic panels? Good question. Um, yes, the ceiling should also, the, uh, the wood panels that we're showing in this one sample, plan on using acoustical wood panels, sort of like the, hall, the uh, stair tower. We had a very difficult acoustic problem in that, if you remember climbing that years back, that was solved by uh, using the sound absorbent materials. So we're going to pay attention to that to try to keep the room um, uh, fairly dead acoustically. I also have a question on the glass. Um, so you had said ballistic proof or bulletproof glass along the inside, and then there's going to be windows along the street? The council dais. The idea was that the, the table where you're sitting would be basically have ballistic shielding put into it when it's built. It'll be a new, newly designed one. Uh, we had police talk to council basically about what, it, what is important from a security standpoint, and a couple of components are one, visibility, knowing if something's happening or coming. Two, uh, panic buttons. It will, of course, be televised. Dispatch has a view of what's occurring in this room. Uh, and then the most important thing is simply duck for cover. If something happens, it usually happens fast, and the best thing to do is duck behind the table. Mm -hmm. And if the, the table provides ballistic protection, that's, that's one of the most important things you can do. So we're not looking at ballistic glass, just tinted glass, or the ability to tint. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to that first drawing, you know, not to, not to get away from this room, but it, were you doing something with the Westwood room too then, or? Oh, good question. At this moment, we're not. Oh, okay. That had been the most recently remodeled room. It's still functioning. Uh, carpet's good, furniture, uh, chairs. So uh, the only thing that's going to happen in there is the same as in the, the lobby, which will be replacing the ceiling tile. A lot of the ceiling tile is getting old, saggy, dirty. And so if you look in the first, second floor offices, uh, you see the new ceiling tile we're using. We're going to just continue that same ceiling tile in the lobby in Westwood Room. And that's about the extent. Now I see in this drawing that uh, it still shows the door to the, to the AV room there. Uh, yes. And will that remain? Or are you going to, in addition to the doors linking the rooms? The plan is to leave both those doors there. As two forms of exit. And that's, that's the other thing. If the duck, duck and cover needs to be expanded, uh, this provides also a, a, basically a room to go in uh, and another way out of the council chambers. Uh, so both those doors were going to be in there. Uh, council, uh, we are going to come back to council too. Uh, just to ask as far as with an option on making this a ballistic wall, shielded wall, to make sort of create a safe room environment back there. And uh, it'll still stay a f flexible space where the chairs are not fixed but movable and can be set up with, I mean, I'm seeing a variety, I've been here for a variety of different s setups and things like that. It'll still have that functionality. Absolutely. We're going to have, of course, new chairs, new round tables, and rectangular tables so we can set it up in different, you know, um, for, for different formats. So that'll still continue. Once uh, another presentation, when you get closer to the, to the end on, on the technology and the cameras and things like that, I think it would be kind of interesting. I mean, you know, we, we could just line that up for some time, maybe the May meeting or something like that it would be kind of interesting to, mm -hmm. to delve into that. But uh, it's intriguing. So there would not be a large drop-down screen and overhead projection anywhere in, in this room? That is the plan right now is to get away from the screen technology. Um, now, the details about how the present, presenters would be over there, the types of screen, if it's just behind them or just out here, those are the details that we have to really work out to make sure our sight distances and lines work, work yeah. good. And, and the screens are big enough so people can see. Oh, yeah, I think our, your... Your ceiling is high enough here that you can, there's something you can do with it, so. Yeah. That's interesting. And it's also interesting about using the, the city contractor, or city staff for for aspects of it. Uh, you know, like you talked about the demo and, and yeah. some of that. We did, the second and third floor was done by the facilities crews. So. Oh, really? <clears throat> wow. Fascinating. Uh, Brian, are the main entry doors to this room going to be glass or wood? The 
The double doors going into the lobby are expected to be glass right now. Since it is going to be a, an aluminum frame glass wall, we would put in uh, glass doors. Are, are they going to be uh, power assist doors for uh, mobility issues? Um, that's something we haven't talked about. Generally, uh, under the code, they're not required. Usually exterior doors are done as a convenience. Um, interior doors could be made assisted uh, or controlled, but that's something we haven't talked about yet. Just one other thing that just popped into my head, may not fit within the budget scheme of things though. Uh, anybody talked about a video wall as a possibility? Far wall perhaps. Just to throw it out there. Good idea. Now one thing you mentioned, the far wall, one uh, item that was discussed too is the, uh, the wall of mayors and the history of the city. There's also out in the lobby a stained glass display that's been here since the day the building was created. Uh, we have the scales of justice. We have uh, some streets and houses representing public works. We have the a compass uh, representing engineering. Um, there's fire for fire. Actually, I think it's flames. And there's one other one I'm not sure of. But anyways, so they did represent aspects of the services provided. And so we're going to try to save that and integrate that somehow into the, the remodel. Um, along with the, the mayor's portraits, it's sort of a history and future. And so uh, the architect's going to be working on sort of how we integrate that as sort of an aspect of our public art into the facility. Excellent. Any other questions? Commission, staff? All right. Thank you, Brian. You're very, very welcome. Much. Glad to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. Exciting changes start at the bottom and work your way up. I knew you'd get to this room eventually. So, <laughs> fantastic. I was surprised when you said 15 years ago that this room was remodeled, but I remember we, I think we had one school board meeting in this room when I was on, because uh, they were redoing that room and, and then uh, this room came online. So I was about 2000. I don't know, three or two or something like that. So yeah. it's been a long time. So great, great work. Uh, the next item, item B is consider franchise fee review for Comcast 2014 to 2016. Uh, we had quite a discussion last week and we left with uh, a couple of charges to the staff. Uh, so I don't know, uh, Reg, you wanna? Yes, sir. I have a couple suggestions. Um, uh, first, I will say that we, uh, I was directed to survey other local franchise authorities and find out if any other partners were available to partner in the audit. And sadly, uh, no, no partners are available right now. Uh, St. Paul is finishing up a um, franchise fee uh, review right now. So uh, while preparing a report for the City Council in the eventuality that in case you were to recommend uh, such an item, we ran across a very interesting uh, bit from the minutes going back a few years, going back to August 28, 2013. The consensus policy was to conduct two different audits that cover three years each during the remaining eight years of the franchise, which ends in January 2021. That means that there'd be an unaudited period from 2008 to the end of 2010 and another two-year gap before the franchise ends in 2021. So let me just mention then that what happened was at a later meeting that year, the commission recommended a three-year franchise fee review, which occurred in 2011, 2012, 2013. And where you folks are at right now and had a, a healthy discussion at the last meeting was, should we give the, should we go back three years and, uh, and audit and pick up from 2013 and do 2014, 2015, and 2016? So my suggestion is that um, the, this was a, a policy uh, decision by an earlier commission that was thinking of the exact same things you talked at the, about at the last meeting. Is it worth it to do it? and what is our obligation under due diligence. So uh, uh, I, I would recommend, uh, I've, I've discussed this with both uh, John and with Jackie, and the staff recommendation is to not go forward with a franchise fee review for 2014 and revisit this next year. 
And uh, at next year, for example, we, we may have the results from other franchise fee audits. Maybe there's evidence that shows that uh, we should do another audit as quickly as possible. And maybe the evidence uh, from other communities, for example, uh, might be that they're still recovering a small amount and, uh, and struggling with the same issues that you folks discussed at your last meeting. With the franchise, nego when do negotiations for a new franchise agreement start then if it expires in 2021? Yes, and they, yeah, so it doesn't you seem start like it's very three years. All of a sudden, doesn't it? Oh my gosh. It seemed very far away, yes, but uh, <laughs> that will start in 2018. It's about a three year process. So really, then, if we were going to do it, maybe a, a the, the the right timing for a, for an audit then would maybe not even be next year, but the the following year do the audit and have the three previous years to uh, to roll into the negotiations with. Well, to be to be honest, the, it's a three year process with not a lot happening for much of the first two years. And then uh, there are many communities around us that have done extensions. Th that's th been the normal process for most communities, frankly, is there's an extension sometimes too as these as it finally gets down to the 11th hour. So uh, there, there, you can't count on that. You have to prepare in, the, in a way that meets uh, federal law. But the, the federal law requires a three-year window. An example is for um, uh, Comcast to give us notice at the correct times and for the city to acknowledge those kinds of deadlines. I, uh, I'm in agreement with your suggestion. I think it's an awfully expensive proposition to audit right now. I'm not sure that we can justify that, and I, I would concur. I think we would be well advised to maybe let it go for a little while yet. I would agree, too, but I also like Dave's idea of... Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, to some agreed upon number and just calling it a day. <laughs> But well, uh, I think that would we'd have to thousand bucks more in the city's coffers, and Comcast would probably consider it a victory for them because they don't have to go through it. Yeah. Did I don't you know. talk to your attorney, by the way? <laughs> we did talk to the city attorney about it, and he gave me some uh, kind of good guidance about how to discuss that. And, and as a matter of fact, what he suggested was a um, was a, uh, a a private meeting with staff and Comcast to talk about these kinds of things, and, and gave us some some helpful direction. Great. All right. So, uh, does, do we need to craft a motion to to move ahead, or is it is uh, staff have direction from the? Well, three commissioners have spoken. I think this is the kind of thing. Since there was such a good discussion last time, that it would be helpful if there was a motion uh, to uh, in, in, so that in the minutes we'd have it clear. That uh, that's that's consensus of the of the body going forward. So and uh, so this motion is basically we we are not going to audit 2014. That's that's our opportunity now is to audit 2014. My suggestion is to waive the franchise fee review for 2014 and reconsider uh, the issue uh, next year in the work plan. Well, I think we have a motion. Uh, somebody want to make that motion? I would make that motion. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That motion carries. So thank you, Reg. That was a great, uh, great example of the work we do. Uh, the next item, item C, is the draft annual report for 2016. Uh, I think you included a, no, do we have a? We don't, you do not have anything by that title. What you have is, is an expanded detailed work plan with a summary with bullet points of uh, the, the past, uh, the main topics that were discussed at each meeting. And so this will be adapted to whatever format the city council will, will, uh, will want for their annual report for this year. So uh, not everything that's in this summary will go in the will go in the final report, but much of this detail will. 
An another thing that, that typically is required, for example, is a, um, an attendance uh, list of, of fo how many folks are attending, how many meetings, and a few things like that. So um, if you have, if you think I've missed something, if there's something here that, um, that if you would like to add to this, by all means, uh, you know, do so tonight or um, uh, upon further review uh, before the end of the year so I can include it. And uh, at a certain point, the council and the um, city manager's office will give me specific um, direction on, on the format of the annual report and you will see that before it's submitted to the council as bruce may recall you you attended last year and basically gave a bullet point summary they had the written document there was no reason to talk about the entire document but then you uh picked out your own uh, bullet points to, to is discuss. is that something that's going to happen again this coming year then it's scheduled for february the 28th okay Oh, wait, there will be a new chair, won't there? <laughs> Maybe not quite yet. All right. Uh, that's fine. That's right. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I did uh, review this. I guess I didn't realize what I was re reviewing, but uh, I, it is a, a good uh, uh, fleshing out of, of uh, the work that we've done. So uh, did anybody have anything that they... Wanted to add. I wasn't change. here for much of this. So. Yeah, you, looks like it looks like everybody did quite quite a bit of work. Yeah, you you came to the to the July the, right the tour and, and then and yeah. yeah so awesome. Well, good. Thank you, and I will attend that meeting if some they want somebody to make bullet points, tell some telecom jokes, things like that. A yeah. uh, Reg, when, if there are any changes to this, when or enhancements or whatever when do you need to have them by well at this point we we only know about the meeting being held on february 28th at a certain point we'll get detailed direction and then i'll do a, a draft and send it to commissioners so that you can look at the format the final format and, okay. and make any changes i might have a little trouble with being long-winded so there might be that the the no. uh, the draft might be shortened did you say February 28th? Oh, I think you said January 28th the first time. Oh, did I? Okay, okay sorry, so I meant February, February 28th. It's 2 Wait a second. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. No, that's not the 28th. It's, uh, this is my final answer. Febru February 27th is the study session with the, uh, with the council and commissions. <laughs> 27th. 27th of February. Awesome. Is this the 2016 document you're talking about? Or yes. 17. This so is the 2000. Some the 16. Okay. Yeah, this will be the review of. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I was ahead. Yeah, you you jumped the thing. So moving on to the 2017 document. There we go. There we go. Uh, I have that now. So uh, moving on to item D is the draft work plan for 2017 and set meeting schedule for 2017. Let's see. You know what we ought to do in 17? You have a mic on? Oh, I'm sorry. You, just a thought, maybe because I come from the wireless industry, um, but maybe we should invite either an AT&T or Verizon person to come and discuss 5G, uh, uh, basically, not just the high-speed broadband, which is very high-speed, but start analyzing how this might affect the city in terms of the cable. I think it's a great idea. And uh, I'd be willing to take point to get somebody for that. When would you like to tackle that, commissioners? <sighs> well, let, let's give it until summertime, uh, only just get let 5G get more mature in their thinking. I, I wouldn't do it January, February. I think it's a little early yet. But sometime in the second half of the year, I would do it. You want to do it July? Yeah, sure. I mean, there's a lot of successful testing going on right now. So I don't think there will be any widespread deployment by the time we renegotiate the contract with Comcast. That could become a big issue, actually. So we'll be prepared. We'll know what's going on. 
Um, uh, Commissioner, is it, uh, what do you think about uh, uh, distributed uh, cells and some of that talk? Would that be appropriate that same night, or will 5G sort of eliminate some of the need for that No, it may still be there, and, and in fact, it could take many different forms. Who knows by the time it rolls out. Um, yeah, I think that wouldn't be a bad thing to add to the agenda. I, I think from the standpoint of the city and potential revenue impact, or service impact from Comcast or CenturyLink or whoever else. Not sure it will affect them, but it, it, uh, it would be good to know. And in particular with respect to uh, whatever we're doing in the high-speed internet in the city and everything else, either wirelessly or through fiber optics or whatever. So yeah, why not? I think it's a good way to learn something. One other time that could be discussed is I've proposed here for February that our CIO Clint Pyers attend to give us a fiber update and talk about a bunch of other things. I know that he's worked hard on DAS and, and so that night he could tell us what we've been up I to think so be a far. Good idea. Yeah, so. sure. Any chance, Reg, that we might be able to talk to somebody from US Internet? Or maybe Clint could do something in that regard? bring us up to speed a little bit. I know he's working on that. I had a chance to talk with him a couple of days ago or a day ago. And that might be of interest to everybody. Yeah, I, we've, we've got an update on U.S. Internet uh, progress in St. Louis Park is listed as February because that's the meeting that Clint will attend. Okay. And uh, perhaps then we could have USI here that night to, to talk about their own progress rather than have Clint. Uh, uh, yeah, that'd be great if we can squeeze that in. I want to mention a couple of things that were added here from, that we didn't get to this year that were left over, so to speak, from Jackie's discussion earlier this year of the City Council's strategic goals. So as an example, um, uh, for the May meeting, um, uh, one is listed supporting public and private schools and community education initiatives. And there's another one in, in, uh, in July and then um, uh, so uh, I, we'll keep that in mind uh, that some of those we haven't addressed yet. I'm not sure how much advance work we need to do before those, but, but that's what those are for, and, and those could be shifted around as well if you think they could be combined with a more appropriate topic on another night. I like the idea. Uh, one of the things that was put forward here was a possible resident survey. I still think that's a good idea. I'm not sure what the best way is to do that at this point, but I think we should look at that. Anything else? Anything other things? All right. Well, if anything comes to mind, great idea about the 5G. I'm, I'm anxious to see what kind of... I do have I do have one other thing that just popped into my head, and I'm I'm not sure if it fits in this necessarily, but um, the DOCSIS 3.1 standard um, was supposed to go into effect this year. I'm not sure if it has officially or not, but that would allow one gig uh, service through Comcast. I don't know if that's actually happened. Some of the people I've talked to at Comcast indicate, oh yeah, one gig is available right now. There hasn't been anything publicized that I'm aware of about that. And you do have to have a different modem in order to be able to do it. But have you heard anything? Have they indicated anything uh, officially? Well, officially, it's under trial in several cities. I don't recall which ones they've selected, but uh, they're doing testing. And so uh, I'm not sure when they'll bring that to uh, the larger, um, to, to all customers or to bring it to Minnesota. But that's certainly something we can uh, request from Comcast and find out if they want to talk about that in any detail. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea, too. Yeah, can't imagine how they do that. One of the things I'm, I'm noticing here, we, we have the CIO coming in February. Turn your phone. I keep here. forgetting. <laughs> we have the CIO coming in in February, and maybe um, there should be twice a year the CIO comes. I mean, he's the chief science officer, in effect, or chief technology officer. And there may be other things that we should get updated on that he believes we should know about. I mean, and maybe if he's coming in February, come again in um, October. October. What do you think? 
doesn't have to be a big, long, you know, thorough discussion, but just the highlights. And the other thing is from both CenturyLink and Comcast, I mean, we're under non-disclosure with them, I'm assuming, right? Um, so anything they tell us in the room stays in the room, or, well, or is that not true? That's not true. Uh, this is a public meeting, and so uh, these meetings are available. Okay, on the well then my idea is bad because I was going to say they may want to give us an update of things. For example, the one gig. When are they going to roll it up? Maybe they haven't announced it yet, but it would be good for us to know. Uh, or other things that they're contemplating, like when I asked her last time about getting rid of standard definition. Uh, they may not want to announce it yet. They may have the plans and may be willing to discuss it under an NDA. I don't know how you do that um, legally or or functionally, but there may be things that either of them want to talk about with us as a heads up or maybe even get our opinion. I don't know. I don't know how to write that in a nice way and what month to put that on and how you would do it legally, but if there's some way maybe should start getting more advanced updates from them as opposed to just, you know, after the fact talking about complaints and other things. Uh, I do like that idea because we don't generally meet with them specifically uh, like that, meet, meet with Comcast that way. They typically will send us a letter when uh, they've made the, their policy change, and of course uh, I do uh, uh, ask them for information about things I see in trade journals now and then, but, uh, but in, like you say, to be able to be in the room and, and just get some informal answers, that, that's a good idea, especially since we've gone to a formal process with CenturyLink like that of quarterly meetings. Uh, as uh, all of you know, and so the, the next one of those, as an example, is coming up next Wednesday. And there's a certain um, agenda we have to follow on that to make sure we touch all those, but that's the perfect time for us to ask any other informal questions of uh, CenturyLink as well. So, uh, you know, perhaps Comcast, you know, uh, uh, at these meetings, uh, they have to be a little bit careful about what they say as compared to if it was a meeting that was not televised. So, so, th so that's a good idea. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a way to, to do that, and I can check with our, our Comcast uh, contacts about that. Did you indicate uh, uh, there's a meeting coming up next Wednesday with CenturyLink? Is that here or downtown? Yes, it is. It's here uh, next Wednesday, uh, the 21st, at 3.30. Okay. Or 3 o'clock. I'm not quite sure. Maybe Rolf's got the... the there we go. Uh, as far as what Comcast plans to do in St. Louis Park, historically, with their 30 million subscribers, they have to roll things out gradually nationwide. So if something's happening in Los Angeles now, probably within three years, just like transitioning to fully digital cable television systems or initiating one gig cities, uh, even if they don't say in three years it's going to be happening in St. Louis Park or within one to three years, it, it probably will be. So what, whatever they do elsewhere is a precursor to what will happen here. Sure. Do, uh, do, do these cable companies have areas that they typically use for I don't know, I want to say alpha testing, but, uh, you know, primary areas. I, they talked about, you know, the DOCSIS 3.1 in, in Atlanta. Is that a typical place where they roll out that kind of stuff? Or Yes, it is. They have, they have their, some of their favored um, systems that they use either because of the, the uh, staff at that location or the, the age of the facility being newer. They're, they have a number of reasons to pick their favorite, uh, favorite beta type uh, sites. Interesting. Great. Well, that's uh, some great ideas. Uh, is there anything else? All right. Uh, moving on. Well, Mr. Chair, uh, let's yes, uh, set. We there's no dates on any of Holy these, yeah, and dates. so I have um, my calendar out too. I was looking at that. Uh, I've got uh, some suggestions. The the Wednesday night has worked great for staff, and and we've had pretty good attendance and haven't had problems. I'm hoping Indeed. Wednesday night is still good for this commi these commissioners. Yeah. Yes. All right. So the first and third Wednesdays of each month are not good because the planning commission meeting meets. So what we've been doing generally lately is going the uh, second or fourth, generally the fourth. Um, uh, Wednesday. There is a conflict in February, however, the February 8th is available, the Council Chambers is available, the 22nd is not. Um, but going into May, the 10th and the 24th are available, July the 12th and the 26th are available, and um, October the 11th and the 25th are available, and December we would want to meet earlier the 13th rather than um, two weeks later on the 27th. 
So uh, the one other thing to keep in mind, uh, I, it's great that we set these tonight uh, because uh, as Brian Hoffman uh, described, this room won't be available for three months of the year. And so we want to make sure we get our reservation in for the community room uh, since that's the room that will be uh, wired for uh, recording uh, public meetings. So, so the eighth is a the eighth of February is is a, a set, right? Because the following uh, date was not available, the twenty second May. You said it could be either the tenth or the twenty fourth. Does anybody have a preference? The twenty fourth. I will probably miss that if it's the twenty fourth. I have to attend a wedding in Israel that around that time. <laughs> so. Um, Huh? All right. Yeah. Let's let's do the tenth of May. Okay. And then July. Uh, uh, July would be the twelfth or the twenty sixth. Now this meeting would be in the uh, the room downstairs, right? Yeah. We've been doing towards the end of July, haven't we? So I guess I would probably go for the the twenty sixth. get a little separation from me and then uh, October the 11th and the 25th I have no preference what date was our meeting this year in the 20th I don't remember when all the Jewish holidays are but the 25th will definitely be clear of them oh yeah that's a good good idea so let's go with the 25th of October Is that okay with everybody yeah okay and in December, uh, yeah, the 13th is, just makes a lot of sense. Great. You got those? We're all set. All right, next item is elect chair and vice chair, effective next meeting, which will be on uh, February 8th, as it turns out. Uh, So I think somebody needs to nominate a chair and a vice chair. I don't know that we've we've uh, had any discussions outside of this. I'll throw out a nomination for Marin for for chair, if she'd be willing. Okay. Do we vote as a point of order? Do we uh, vote as a slate, or do we vote each one individually? You should vote them individually, and you do need to call for nominations three times just to meet the uh, rules oh, of order there thing. You go. All right. So, uh, well, we have a nomination. I call for uh, nominations for chair. Is there anybody else? We have one nomination, and I will call a third and final time. Is there any other nominations for chair of this fine commission? Going once, going twice? Once All right. Now. <laughs> we we have a uh, nomination of of uh, Mar Mar Myron Anderson for uh, for chair. Uh, any 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 discussion? You have a campaign platform or anything like that you want to talk about? <laughs> All right. Uh, you, you, there we you, go. You plan on telecom peace, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. All, right. ballots. There you go. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed? That motion carried unanimous, unanimously. So, awesome. Yeah, I have been. <laughs> Holy cow. All right, so our second uh, election for the evening is the vice chair. So I call for nominations for vice chair. So the duties are you fill in for the chair when they are not available. So it's. No. <laughs> Who's the current vice chair? I, yeah. The cur current vice chair was Marin. Oh, oh. Okay. So, yeah, oh. so you just got a promotion. Yeah, yeah, she just got promoted. Right. So, so then, have you been vice chair? Nope. Would you like to? I nominate Abe. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I would second that. All right, we have a nomination. Any other nominations? I will call for a second time. Any other nominations for vice chair? 
is your chance to get out of it. Uh, <laughs> one, a third and final time. Any other nominations for vice chair? All right. So we have a nomination in, in Abe Levine. Uh, do you have a platform or anything you're running on? <laughs> I will help her balance the budget. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> All right. All those in favor of Abe, Vice Chair? Aye. 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 As opposed? And that motion carried unanimously. So thank you, thank you for stepping up, both. And on that, I will step down. Uh, so item F, the complaint log review. And it was much shorter. As a matter of fact, I thought I maybe missed... I was scrolling it, and uh, I thought maybe I was missing pages, but Acrobat never lies to me. So, uh, oh, here we go. Any any comments on any of these? Or the first one is very. I, 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 yeah, mine's on. Oh, it is on. Okay. Yeah, that's time I remembered. No, I mean, I have no, no comment other than some, some of these, I, you know, and I, I've never had a problem getting through. And so I, I'm just, I'm curious if some of these are just user error as opposed to, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I've been calling their support line for 20 years and have never failed to get through. So I was just. Well, that's where the anecdotal stuff can be. Misleading sometimes. Yeah. You, you never know. I, I know for a fact, though, that uh, I've had people call to complain and say, I keep calling the customer service number and I get a busy signal. I can't get through to them. You know, that's, a, that's the kind of specific comment that, of course, causes your ears to perk up because they're supposed to have plenty of lines to roll over, et cetera. Right. So, uh, but but uh, some of the times, for example, we, I know that one of the uh, most intense um, complaints that I get is people dislike menu trees that take forever. And uh, Comcast is not the longest one I've ever heard. I was, I've They're used it myself either. many times. It's not the longest. It's not the shortest. I've run into a couple for uh, service organizations that are extremely tedious and where you've entered your account number the second or third time, and, and um, yeah, there's there's a very good TV commercial about how the the guy by the, eventually is sitting on the floor saying representative, and um, so uh, anyway, so uh, com so the anecdotal information sometimes is misleading. One of the things I noticed from this this one that made me think about it is she was calling. I don't know why I thought it was a she. I guess that's not fair for me to, uh, to assume that. I don't know why, but I. Um, Whoever this person was, they're dialing the 800 number, and I never dial the 800 number. I dial 612-522-2000, and which was the old number before Comcast became here. Uh, and I'm wondering if Comcast shouldn't be uh, putting out their local number for people to call and make that known rather than the 800, and you might actually get through somewhere yeah, better. I think that's a good idea. I don't know that they do that right now. I don't think they do. Is that like the old I think it's cell number? Well, it, I, I think it's a Time Warner cable number before here. Well, I think, it was, yeah. No, Could have been. it goes back, that number goes back a long time. Does it time. really? Yeah. But I, yeah. You, could, you can see how often I've called them, because I know it by heart. But um, I'm wondering if that shouldn't be, I wonder if there isn't some sort of um, uh, a switching station here that might be better off than just going straight to the 100 number, which who knows where that is. There used to be, there was a recommendation, if I'm remembering correctly, about Instead of using the 800 number to use, a, 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 there was more of a local number. I don't remember what that number was offhand. Yeah, but I do that. remember that, yeah, I do remember that that was a suggestion. And it may have been Comcast that suggested it. I don't, I don't really remember. Uh, but maybe, yeah, that would be a point worth asking again to see if that would help. Requiring a local number to be publicized might be part of a customer service ordinance. You might want to advocate with the council. Hmm. Ah, that is a good thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. So how do we advocate that? Do we actually pass a motion that goes to the council, or does somebody just go pick their favorite city council person and whisper in their ear, or <laughs> how do you do that? The normal I mean, procedure is for it. in a way, but I, I don't know the mechanics and the rules we, of We talked to Mr. Dunlap here. Oh, okay, Mr. Dunlap. Reg, yeah. on our behalf, yeah. could you whisper in somebody's ear in the city council? 
uh, uh, that's uh, the the city council reads the minutes for all the meetings for, for one thing but a, a formal motion for example would be uh, brought forward uh, a, a, as an example at the last meeting you directed me to see if we had any if we had found any other communities that have done a customer service uh, ordinance that's more stringent than the FCC um, uh, re requirements. I have not had any responses from my my friends that are local franchise authorities elsewhere. So at this point, I don't have anything to go on, and um, uh, I, I would like to know if there's a model that we could use um, rather than um, brainstorm the entire ordinance, for example. Do we know? Uh, do we know if any other any any uh, any of the other Comcast areas? have anything like this or do they all recommend the 800 number and that's just it? Uh, as far as the telephone thing, uh, whenever folks call me uh, frequently when they say they have a hard time getting through, I ask what number they call and they're calling the 800 number. So I always recommend they call the the 651-222-3333 number, which is what they print on their uh, bills for really? uh, for customer oh. service. Okay. I never read my bill. <laughs> I get an email and just Yeah, me yeah. too. <laughs> People that have done that in the past, have they had better luck using that number? It, it's hard to say. They frequently, they don't, they rarely call me back to say that. Yeah, I reached them the first time on that number, but that's the number that I've been using for many years, and uh, whenever I need to call. Comcast. So the question is, really, and Comcast that maybe could tell us at the next meeting, what happens technically when you dial those local numbers? Is it just an alias for the eight hundred, and we've all been getting lucky, yeah. or, um, or? You know, sort of an overlay number, so to speak, or it actually has a different pathway through. That's a great question. I, I suspect that both of the local numbers, both the uh, the six one two number you mentioned and the six five one number, that there's a good chance they might go to the St. Paul uh, service center, uh, local call center, and uh, that uh, an eight hundred number you it, you could expect that that might go to some, another area of the region, Denver, exactly. or one of the other uh, call centers that they've just opened up. I, uh, over the weekend, my internet went out, my Comcast internet, so uh, it was a huge problem for my wife. Well, not such a big problem for me, but uh, but in the uh, process of troubleshooting, I went to Comcast's website on my phone and followed their little directions. They had me unplug the route and the modem, and I plugged it back in, and I, I did this, and the one thing was to reboot my computer. So I hooked my computer up, as they said, with a cord to the to the thing, and and then they asked me to reboot my computer, and did that work? And I said no. I clicked the no and hit next, and it says congratulations, you successfully fixed your thing. I thought, well, did I hit the wrong button? So I went through the whole rigmarole again. Only I didn't reboot my laptop because it doesn't need to be rebooted every five seconds. But uh, and I did it three times, and it always told me I was successful even after I clicked no. It was not successful, so it was just kind of funny. But uh, I ended up changing the grounding block, and uh, it works wonderfully. So I'm not sure what the problem was, but I fixed it for $1.23 and a quick <laughs> quick drive to Menards. So, all right. Uh, was that outside your ground block? No, actually, it's, uh, it, it swings into my garage. My garage is in the back of my lot, and so I, uh, I took the power and utilities all go to my garage, and then they go underground to my house. So, uh, but it's out in my, it's in the garage, so. So it's where the, the drop is grounded? Right, right where it enters. So it's a, it's a bad contact then. It could have very well been. Uh, no, it's a ground block. It goes to. It, I have a. Uh, no, no. Okay. No, it's a. You know, it's a bonded ground to a grounding rod in my garage, right outside my garage. But that's also where power comes in. It shares the same thing, but uh, you know, the telephone, the cable, all come in there, and then it goes underground to my house. But. Uh, yeah, it was just corrosion of some tor sort, so yeah, it's cheap enough to change out. So at first, I just put a barrel connector in there, and it was good, and it worked. So then I think oh, I better get a grounding block, hook that ground back up in case I get struck by lightning, burn down my house. So, but uh, it was just kind of interesting how uh, it, it went so far, and then just assumed that it was fixed. Uh, I did not. Uh, I did not call. So. Uh, Anything else well, on the complaints? the complaints? I'm surprised I'm seeing that, that this person said they were paying their bill at the Beltline building. I mean, that's 
That's been years already since you can't do that. And but the Xfinity office on Excelsior. I don't know what to say, but it's just odd. I just a complaint, I guess. Um, they go out of, to great pains on television to point out that they've got these things. Mm -hmm. So I, I hate, I, it's hard to hold Comcast at fault for some of these complaints in a way. Maybe they left out, it seemed like only yesterday I was paying at the Beltline building. Right. It's been a long time. It's been, what is it, seven years uh, between? Yeah, uh, exactly. There was a drop box for bills, though, and it could be that that has been removed. I, I, I actually haven't checked the Beltline office, but for a while there was It still was is an, a Comcast office. It still is a Comcast, uh, still uses it uh, and, and has, a, has a presence there, but they had used to have an equipment drop and a, a billing drop there, and it could be that's what the customer was referring to. The door to. says warehouse on it now. Oh, so, okay. And they've got a, a sign on the lawn there that says to go to one of the several other customer service centers that they actually have. On that note, too, I had occasion to stop at the Xfinity office on Excelsior on behalf of a client that I was working with over in Edina, and uh, they were terrific. They, uh, I happened to walk in, and the person that was at the door was on a cr crutches, <laughs> turned out to be a technician that fell off the ladder while he was doing some work, so he was kind of, pardon the pun, grounded for a little <laughs> while <laughs> till he could be back on his feet to work on a ladder again. But a uh, very nice guy, very helpful. I uh, had, uh, had a lot of questions, technically speaking, in terms of what they're offering, and he was able to help very well. So it's a well-run office. My experiences have been good there. That was my next move was to... to take my router over to there because I didn't know what else to do other than call but great any other discussion about the complaint log review all right moving on item seven communications from the chair commissioners and the city staff I do not have any communications other than it's been a joy serving you as chair and I look forward to sitting in that chair or maybe that chair next time <laughs> hey can I get the end I have never sat on the end you've always kept me kind of close to you actually so anyway uh, any other communications from the oh let's give the, the chair and the vice chair three chairs for doing the work yeah. <laughs> thank you she'll find out that it's not really all that difficult uh, Reg does a great job setting it up Great staff here, St. Louis Park. So, and with that, I pass it over to city staff. Yeah, I, mean. I do have a couple things to update you on. Uh, first of all, is that uh, in some informal talks with Comcast, um, they have decided to commit to uh, allowing the city to have one HD channel within uh, 90 days of notice, which was part of the uh, transfer agreement, the proposed transfer agreement that had to do with. Uh, Comcast uh, transferring this franchise to Greatland. So uh, we don't actually have that in our hands yet, but it's something that Carly Werner, who was here at the last meeting, said that uh, they, they would be able to advocate for and uh, are, are very, um, uh, are, she's convinced that should be no problem for them to, to do. So that would be great news because right now um, we do have all uh, HD production equipment in the control room and uh, just in the last couple meetings uh, all the meetings are recorded in HD and uh, they go on to CenturyLink, Prism TV in HD and on YouTube in HD and uh, you can see a difference. And speaking of CenturyLink, Prism TV, um, the last uh, three or four working days they have been installing their product here in City Hall at uh, Fire Station 1 and in the police EOC. So we now can see what it looks like and there's a few things to clean up and as John noticed right away uh, the Mosaic channel which is supposed to be able to show all the Part TV channels and be the one channel you publicize for folks to get to all Part TV channels. Channel 22 is not working right now um, as the Mosaic so we'll have to have them uh, look at that and get that fixed up. But they, we, we can, for the first time, finally see what it looks like. And then um, finally, um, I, we talked briefly about the customer service standards. And uh, I didn't put that on the work plan for next year. But uh, should we then add that to the work plan uh, for next year to uh, continue researching and, and, and looking at the kinds of things we'd want to put in that? 
We talked about that last time, didn't we? Yeah. Um, hmm? Yeah, I think so. Is that it, Reg? That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Uh, so by next Tuesday, if I cross the finish line successfully, Channel 15 will have had 106 premieres this year. So it's similar to last year. We got the triple digits. So that's a lot of uh, good work by Scott in the control room. And thanks, Scott, and myself. Um, thanks, Scott. I, I I saw Scott at the holiday train, and he looked cold, so I gave him my hand warmers. <laughs> and then uh, I shared one with my wife, so I was left with just one. But uh, it was a great time, that the holiday train, and uh, I look forward to Yeah, the, that was so fun. I saw some video on YouTube, I think, of uh, some of the stuff that he had shot. So pretty exciting, pretty exciting thing. Uh, any other communications, Jackie? Anything? All right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I move we adjourn. Oh, I'll second. All right, a motion and a second. Anybody, we have any discussion? All right, all those in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. All right, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Happy See you all in everybody. 2017.